All right, welcome back everyone to our <clears throat> second lecture on identity. Let me just share the uh, documents. All right, so let's pick up on lesson number 49, page 66. So, what have we seen in this um, chapter in Romans 6? Um, we have been crucified with Christ, which is the body of sin or the power of sin has been destroyed and sin has no more dominion over us. So try to memorize Romans chapter 6 verse 14. Okay. Second, we have been buried with Christ which means we have been separated from the past life. It's gone. No more control on us. Our former lifestyle is gone. We have been resurrected with Christ. That means we've been given new life. We've been raised up into the heavens with Christ. That means we are separated from this present age, this present world. And we are seated with Christ. That we are positioned to rule and reign. We are given authority in Christ right so what are we supposed to do with this truth right these this this reality what are we supposed to do with it so in Romans chapter 6 there are three key uh, three key words that you find that Paul uses um, to tell us what to do right? three key words it is to know it is to reckon or consider. Reckon is an old English word, uh, in English we consider. And it is to yield or present or surrender. So we'll, we'll think about these three words. And you find them here in Romans 6. In Romans 6, verse 6, he says, knowing this. Right? That means we must know the truth. So that's why you study Romans chapter 6 and you understand it. So that you can know the truth. So know it. Which we have done so far. The second is to reckon or to consider it as a fact. In Romans 6 verse 11 and 12 he says, Therefore reckon yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin and to alive unto God through Jesus Christ. So reckon. That word reckon is actually, uh, 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 in the Greek, it is an accounting word. That means count it so. That means, suppose you have 10 100 rupee notes. 10 100 rupee notes. You count. 1, 2, 3, 4. 10 100 rupee notes. Total is 1,000. So you don't doubt. It is thousand. But you reckoned it. You have counted it. No doubt. Somebody says, no, 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 it is only 900. He says, hey, no, 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 it is 10, 100 rupee notes means it is thousand. Yeah. Say, so, no, you start in the middle and you count. Count that way and count this way. Okay, you count five that way, count five this way, it's still 10. It will always be. 10, 10 hundred rupee notes, it is thousand rupees total. You've reckoned it. So when it's an accounting term, when an accountant says 10 hundred rupee notes, thousand rupees. Yeah, it is. You cannot change it. It is, it is a fact. So Paul says, reckon, count it like a fact. No doubt, no question. This is truth. Everything that God has said there, I reckon it so. I consider it as a fact, as absolute truth. No question, no doubt, because I have counted it. It's reckoned. So, first, you must know the truth. Second, you and I must reckon, consider it as a fact. So, yes, my old man has been crucified. I consider it as a fact. I have been buried. 
whole life has no claim over me. I consider it as a fact. I've been raised to walk with the life in Christ. I consider it as a fact. I have been raised up together with Jesus. I'm separated from this, the course of this world. I consider it as a fact. I am seated with Jesus in heavenly places. I consider it as a fact. No doubt. No question. So that's the second thing. And the third thing he says is you must yield to it. So he uses that word yield three times. Romans 6, 13, 16 and verse 19. He says to yield means to give yourself, to present yourself. In, 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 in the New King James, he, he uses the word present yourselves. All in the original King James says yield or to give yourself to. And that means, I know this truth, I consider it as a fact, and now I am surrendering myself to this truth, to live in line with this truth. He says, yield your members, that means your body, as instruments of righteousness, as weapons of righteousness. You surrender your body to the truth. You surrender your body, surrender your mind, surrender your body to this fact, to this truth. Do not surrender your body to the old life. Don't surrender it. So this is a choice we make. To what are you going to yield yourself? To what are you going to surrender yourself? You surrender yourself to this truth. You surrender yourself to as, as unto God. God, you have given me this truth. I'm surrendering my body, my members as instruments of righteousness as unto God surrender yourself unto God that's how we walk in this truth three things no consider yield no the truth reckon it consider it to be fact and third yield yourself to God to walk in this Truth. Refuse to yield yourself to the past. I'm not going to yield myself. You're making a choice, a deliberate choice. I'm yielding myself to God as a member, as a as as members. I'm yielding my my flesh, my body to God to walk in this truth. So this leads us to directly to the next section on how to yield ourselves. Uh, to this truth. Uh, yeah, Vene, please go ahead. Uh, please pass the mic to Vene. Uh, Pastor, we now know the truth and uh, uh, we are yielding to the truth as well. Um, and uh, to yield to this truth, uh, we put so many boundaries to our life so that we don't go back to that old life. And uh, now there, there is kind of a fear uh, in, in a, uh, personally myself, like uh, not to go back and put so many boundaries. And uh, uh, you are scared or fearful to like uh, to not go even to that street also, because there's something that which is disturbing and which is not uh, uh, like there is zero tolerance because God's nature is in me. Yes. There is this zero tolerance for some of the things of the world. Uh, so is that fear good? Or uh, if it's not, then how should our attitude be? Uh, and uh, uh, how, how do we go about it, Pastor? Yeah. OK, good question. Uh, part of the answer is, is actually coming up in the next section. I'll just give a brief about it. But basically what, what Paul will be now leading us, teaching us uh, is, he says, you know, uh, that if we walk in the spirit, we are free from the law. You're no longer under the law. That means, or we're fulfilling the law. So basically, see, when, when imagine a person under the law, it's like, oh, I shouldn't do this, I shouldn't do that. You know, we, we, we have all these things. But he says, when you walk, yield to the Spirit. 
against such galatians 5:22 against such there is no law i mean you're you're automatically fulfilling the law when you're yielded to the spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom so you're actually completely free when you're fully surrendered to the holy spirit so there is that sense of total freedom when you're walking yielded and surrendered to the holy spirit and yet at the same time we have our guards up that means we are watchful bible also says be sober be vigilant so in that sense we can never do away with that part you know jesus said watch and pray that you do not enter into temptation so that watchfulness is is some is a theme uh, throughout the new testament uh, that that we have to maintain we have to be vigilant but yet we can be free we don't have to be in a sense of uh, like a morbid fear uh, we are watchful but we are not like under a wrong kind of fear uh, there is that healthy fear of god and a healthy fear of not wanting to do anything wrong in the eyes of god that's a good thing and that's where we are watchful we are vigilant but there's a sense of freedom because where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty and when you're walking in the spirit we are automatically fulfilling all the things required by the law this we will come to that in the next section right so what we have said is you know paul has given us this truth we are free from sin all of this that has happened in christ he says three things you do you know this truth reckon it to be a fact and you yield to it the next question is okay how to do it you know, how do we practically live this so that is what we come into section 6 so if you you look in your bible Romans chapter 6 7 8 Romans 6 7 8 in Romans 6 he has taught us these these amazing truths of identification we are identified with Christ in his crucifixion death in his death burial resurrection ascension and exaltation we are identified with Jesus Romans 6 know this truth consider it to be fact yield yourself to it then when we come to Romans 7 Romans chapter 7 Paul is describing his own life under the law his past life under the law so this is very important you need to we need to get this very clear Romans chapter 7 Paul is not describing his life as a believer is describing his life before he became a believer when as a Jew he was living under the law that is Romans chapter 7 so we're not studying it now i'm just giving it to you in our third year you know we will study person under the law who knew the law of god he loved the law of god he wanted to keep the law but he did not have the power to do it you understand so he ends up romans chapter 7 saying oh wretched man that i am who will deliver me from this body of sin means who's going to set me free from this power of sin and then he says but thanks be to god through our lord jesus christ he says but there is meaning 
I am struggling like this. Who's going to set me free? Thanks to God. He is, he has the answer. And then Romans chapter 8 begins. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. So that is the answer. In Romans 7, I'm struggling under the law. I know the law. I know it is good. I want to keep it. I want to follow it. But sin is more powerful than me. And uh, who is going to deliver me? Ah, answer. Romans 8. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. That means the Holy Spirit who is having control of me in Christ, he has set me free from the control of sin and death. So that's the answer. And then in, in Romans 8, uh, and then there's a parallel scripture passage in Galatians 5. He teaches us how to walk according to the Spirit, not according to the flesh. He teaches us, which we are going to learn, right? So what's the point? In Romans 6, God has finished the work. In Romans 8, uh, Romans 7, you know, if we struggle by ourselves, we cannot do it. Romans 8, the Holy Spirit, He helps us walk free from the dominion of sin and death. The Holy Spirit helps us. So this is how we live our life in Christ. We must walk in the Spirit. I mean, we're going to learn what, what does it mean, how to do it. Okay? So let's begin to look at that. Lesson number 15. I don't know if somebody has asked a question on the chat. Let me just check. Any questions on the chat? Okay. All right. So let's continue. So let's look into Romans 8. Romans 8, Galatians 5, these are parallel passages, so we're going to look at that. Um, section 6, Spirit of Life in Christ. Notice Romans 8, 1 and 2. Who can say it by heart? We've learned it in the beginning. There is therefore, let's say together, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Verse 2. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. Okay. So Paul is giving us this. He says, look, in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. Okay. So, yeah, uh, you know, in Romans 7, uh, he, he, he was facing so much condemnation. Why? Because he knew what was right. He wanted to do what was right. But every time he ended up doing what was wrong. And so how much is... He says, I'm such a wretched man. Full of condemnation. In Christ, there is no... To those who are in Christ Jesus. And then he tells us something about this, this life in Christ. What is it? We do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So this is that new life we are talking about, or we have been talking about. This new life is not according to the Flesh. I'm not following the de evil desires of the flesh. But instead, I am walking according to the Holy Spirit. So that is the difference. And that is how we live out our new life in Christ. 
Right? So you not walk according to the flesh, but walking according to the spirit. Why? Verse 2. Because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. So in Christ Jesus, we are experiencing the law of the spirit of life, the life-giving spirit. The law, the, in this in, here, you can understand the word law as in something that dictates us, something that controls or influences, directs. So the direction of the Holy Spirit, the law of the Spirit, the direction, the dictates, the influence, the dominion of the law of the Spirit of life, the life-giving Spirit in Jesus, so if the Holy Spirit is dominating you and me, the Holy Spirit is influencing you and me, what will happen? He said He has made us free from the law of sin, from the dictates, the dominion, the control, the influence of sin, and death. Death meaning everything that brings destruction in our lives. Holy Spirit set us free. You understand? So in Christ, this is ours. We do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, helping us live out our life in Christ, He sets us free from the law of sin and death. So if there's any sin, anything that's destroying your life, take it to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, your presence, your influence in my life, the Bible says, you have made me free. From the law of sin and death. Any sin, anything that destroys, the Holy Spirit has made me free. So the Holy Spirit, now I want to walk in it. I want to walk in it because the word says, you have made me free from the law of sin and death. I want to walk in it. So we need to draw the, the life of the life-giving power of the Spirit of God. How do we do that? We will explore this in this lesson. So, it's so important that about the law of the Spirit. That means I, I yield myself to the law of the Spirit. Holy Spirit, fill me. Holy Spirit, have all of me. Holy Spirit, have all of me. That is the law of the Spirit. Letting the Holy Spirit dictate, have dominion, have law, control over me. Lesson 51. What does he do? He sets us free from the law of sin. Uh, Pastor, like now the holy law of the spirit, now the Holy Spirit is residing in us. Yes. And the Holy Spirit wants to live, uh, guide us into holy life. Yes. And our mind is just allow, saying yes to the Holy Spirit. Yes. It is no more I who is living, but Holy Spirit living in me, leading me to a holy life. Yes. And I'm just choosing, uh, I'm just saying yes to the Holy Spirit and not doing what my flesh want to do. Rather than I want to do good and I want Holy Spirit to help me. How is that? Yeah. So, it, it, is, it is a, so when we think about how we journey with God, we always have to think in terms of co-laboring. That means we are partners together. Okay? Uh, so there is his aspect and there is my participation. Right? So for instance, Philippians 2 verse 13, it says, It is God who works in you, both to make you willing and able to do His will. So God is working, He is making me able, and willing and able. So there is God's part, He is doing that. But there is also my part, which is, many scriptures, Romans 8.13, they who are, or Galatians 5.24, those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its affections and desires, or walk in the spirit that means i must walk yielded to the holy spirit so that is my side so it's a coming together of both you know so on one side god is working the other side i am yielding you know we're co-workers 
because God is not going to override my will. If I want to, right now I can take this and I can throw it. But I'm willing not to. So that is not a good thing to do. It's my will, right? My choice. So God works with our will, you know, and so our will cooperates. And so it's a, it's a coming together of both the law of the Spirit, which is the influence, the control of the Holy Spirit of life, and me saying yes to it, Him. Then we are able to walk. And He strengthens us. He strengthens us. Right? So Romans 8, 1 and 2, He, verse 2, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin. So what does the Holy Spirit do? He helps us walk free from the law of sin. He helps us walk free from the control, the dictates, the dominion, the influence of sin. Right? So, um, you know, like, like uh, I've kind of summarized these things in from <coughs> Romans 7. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Um, Romans 7, 21 to 25. So this is where, in this is Romans 7, where Paul is sharing his struggle, you know. Uh, we just put a portion out, of, uh, out there. He says, I find then a law that is evil, that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good, verse 22, for I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me to captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So he's saying, you know, this, this sin is controlling me. This is Romans 7, right? Uh, he wants to do good, but he finds that sin is so powerful. And that's what he says, you know, verse 24, Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death, this thing that is working death in me? Verse 25, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I serve the law of God, and with the flesh I'm serving sin. So that's his state under the law. But then in, in chapter 8, verse 2, that's the song of triumph. The Holy Spirit sets me free from the law of sin. So that he says, it is controlling me, but hey, in, the, in Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit sets me free from the law of sin. I'm now able to follow the law of God. And then... Lesson 52, uh, he also sets us free from the law of death, sin and death. That means things that are being dis destructive to our lives. So sin, the result of sin is death. So when we yield ourselves to sin, it is bringing, it is, it is a decay, a slow degradation of our moral fiber. It's a slow degradation of so many things in our lives. So when the Holy Spirit, even He controls us, He sets us free from the law of sin and death. This destruction that takes place in our lives because of sin. He sets us free from that. So we don't yield to that. So we see that again repeated in Romans 8, 10, 11. If Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Verse 11, but if the Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. So if the Holy Spirit is in you, what does he do? He gives life to your mortal body. He gives life to your body. This body, physical body. This body is dying, of course, but he's giving life. He's empowering this. He's strengthening this light body by His Spirit who lives in me. I remember, you know, during COVID time, those two years, um, 20, 2020 and 2021, right? Yeah, those were the two years. It was really bad. And I think it was in 2021. I mean, uh, 2021, the second wave, uh, so many of our people, uh, known people, our church people, others, and they were very seriously admitted in the hospital. And we used to use this verse. You know, those days we cannot go inside the hospital and do visit and pray. Nobody's allowed. Uh, and yet, sometimes some of our people 
were there inside those COVID wards with the ICU and all these things that they, you know, these ventilators and all. And uh, we can't go, you know, we couldn't go. But I used to take this verse, Romans 8, 11, pray, pray for that. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead, he is living in that person and he is giving life to that person. And I remember at least, at least two very critical cases uh, where our people were. And uh, uh, doctors would give us report. His all oh, lungs are all affected. I mean, today when you look back, it's like, yeah, you know, but at that moment, going through it was very, very, you know, uh, the, the kind of reports we hear. So all his lungs are affected. They're closing, he's shutting down. Uh, he's, you know, in that critical state. He said, no. God said, the spirit who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. And what does he do? He gives life to your mortal body. So the Holy Spirit in him is giving life to those lungs that have been affected. The Holy Spirit in him. So we can't go and pray, but from home while we are praying, this is what we pray. And, 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 and so I remember those, those cases where it was so critical. You know, doctors will say like, it's like, you know, so much of his lungs has been affected and he can't breathe and there's on this, all this thing. I just pray, no God, your word says, uh, and we command those, 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 those lungs to clear up, we command that, you know. To, and uh, so that is how we took it, took these scriptures and applied it. But the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. Things that destroy us. And in that particular situation, it was COVID that was causing so much havoc. And we just pray. And, you know, both those people came out uh, alive from just being so close to death. Right? And so Paul, uh, Paul also writes about this in 2 Corinthians 4, 10 to 11. So this is part of the Zoe life of God. You know, we, we, re we heard about Zoe life. Everywhere the word life is, it's the Greek word Zoe. Right? He's talking about the God kind of life. For the law of the spirit of life, spirit of Zoe, uh, the spirit who dwells in you, he gives Zoe to your mortal bodies. He gives that God kind of life. He's imparting that life. Same thing in 2 Corinthians 4, 10 to 11. Paul says, always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life, the Zoe of Jesus, the God kind of life, the life of Jesus, Zoe of Jesus, may be made manifest in our body. So the Zoe life of God can affect your body. It's right there, 2 Corinthians 4.10. And then he repeats it in verse 11. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus, the Zoe of Jesus, may be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So let's say this together. The Zoe life of God in me affects my body. It gives life to my body. The spirit of life dwelling in me, he quickens my mortal body. He gives life to my mortal body. Amen? So Paul's saying, actually, when you read 2 Corinthians 4, 10 and 11, you have to imagine, you have to try to picture this. In his second missionary journey, when Paul was traveling, or was it his, uh, let me think, now this is Acts, um, Acts 14, yeah, I think his second missionary journey. Um, uh, when Paul was going through Derbe, Lystra, and Iconium, when he comes to Derbe, the Jews come in, they stone him, and they drag him out of the city, and they leave him as dead. So imagine a man who is stoned. Not one small stone, like that. stone. They drag him out of the city and they leave him as dead. But the Bible says, the believer, the new believers, they gathered around Paul and he stood up 
and he went back to the city and the next day he continued his journey now in the natural something like that is not possible suppose we one stone hits we be like ah oh, you know limping for a few days this is paul has been stoned but he's getting up and next day he's going on his journey to preach so paul is saying here in second corinthians 4 10 and 11 in my body i i have been beaten and bruised you know as you can imagine how many times he said three times he was beaten with you know with 39 stripes three times ah. so much so much he faced so in my body you know maybe i said he's carrying all the bruise but he's saying the life of jesus is made manifested in my body there's something more powerful the life of jesus is made manifest in my body amen so uh, we should expect it. And I'm not saying, say, if you're, if you're not feeling well, we generally tell people, you go and rest, no problem, it's okay. You take some medicine, it's okay. I mean, we're not, I'm not saying that. But at the same time, we should say, Holy Spirit, you are in me. You are quickening my mortal body. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you bring healing to every cell in my body. Let the life of Jesus be made manifest in my mortal body. So you ask for it you pray for it because that is part of what the holy spirit does you're with me yeah okay but now how do we live out this life in christ lesson 53 we must walk according to the spirit of life that means i must yield myself to the holy spirit because he is the one who gives us the strength to subdue the flesh. This flesh will always come up with its evil desires. Because this flesh is very much in contact with a sinful world. So it feels what the environment. So example, suppose you jump in the swimming pool. The water is very cold. You'll feel it. It's very cold. Or jump in the river or lake, whatever. And if the water is very cold, you feel it. So like that, our body is feeling this environment in which we are living. So it feels the sin, the pull of sin and all of that. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, we subdue the flesh and we walk according to the Spirit. Okay. So, Romans 8. Let's look at these verses. For what, verse 3, for what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, He condemned sin in the flesh. So, uh, what the law could not do, he, God fulfilled it in Jesus by sending Jesus in, in uh, the human body. And in the human body, he judged sin. That's what he's saying, verse 3, verse 4, that the righteous requirement of the Lord may be fulfilled in us, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So now, you and I, who walk according to the Spirit, we actually are able to fulfill the requirements of the law. In the Old Testament, they couldn't. But in the New Testament, we, who are walking according to the Spirit, are able to keep the righteous requirements of the law. We are able to fulfill it. Verse 5, For those who live according to the flesh set their mind, minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. So the first step to walking in the Spirit, walking according to the Spirit, is verse 5. Set your mind on the things of the Spirit. So he says, look, if you walk according to the Spirit, in verse 4 he says, if you walk according to the Spirit, you will fulfill 
all the righteous requirements of the law. You live the way God wants you to live. But how do I start doing it? First step. Verse 5. Don't set your mind on the things of the flesh. So don't consult with your body. Body, today what do you want? Two plate biryani, three plate kebab. Don't consult with your body. No. Consult with the Holy Spirit of God. What do you want me to do today? So, those who live according to the flesh, what do they do? They set their minds on things of the flesh. They say, flesh, what do you want? I want to make you happy. But those who are living according to the Spirit, what do they do? They set the mind on the things of the Spirit. So Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do? Being spiritually minded. So how do we walk according to the Spirit? First step. Put your mind on what pleases the Holy Spirit, not what is going to please your flesh. First step. So talk to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, is it okay? It's not okay. What do you want me to do? What should I do? I want to do what is pleasing to you. So you talk to Him. Lord, I want to know what is good, what is right, what is pleasing. What are you doing? You're putting your mind on the things of the Spirit. That is my first. I'm not even asking body, what do you want? I'm not saying, you know, you enjoy your breakfast and all that. <laughs> Those are normal things. But I'm talking about, you know, we're talking about living our, our life in Christ. This is how we start. We have to walk according to the Spirit, but set your mind on the things of the Spirit. Second. Lesson 54. See, I, I put all these things in small chapters. I have to expand it as a book, and hopefully uh, I'm planning to work on it this over the next couple of months. But uh, all these are just uh, is the outline of a book, so it's very, very, it seems very empty, but these chapters will be expanded. Um, uh, be in the Spirit. Lesson 54. So, Romans 8, we're continuing Romans 8, and we also have to look at a parallel passage, which is Galatians 5. Uh, Romans 8, verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. So, of course, the Spirit of God is in you. So what must you do? Don't be in the flesh, but be in the Spirit. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not is. So, don't be in the flesh. But be in the spirit. That means don't be preoccupied and yielded to the flesh. But be in the spirit. Be in the spirit all the time. Second thing, be in the spirit. First is put your mind on the things of the spirit. Holy Spirit, what you want. Second, be in the spirit, not in the flesh. That means you're preoccupied with Holy Spirit, what you want. You're always starting off in your spirit, in your spirit. Okay. And um, I don't know where I mentioned this, Ephesians 5. Oops, sorry. Okay. I think I need to add it here. All right, be in the Spirit. How do we keep ourselves in the Spirit? Let's go to Ephesians 5. I'll explain it from there, and then uh, we will continue this next week. Um, Ephesians chapter 5, it's not, uh, I didn't put it there in the notes, but let's go there. How do we, you know, how do we be in the Spirit? Ephesians 5, 18 to 21. I will read them, these verses. Ephesians 5, 18 to 21. You all with me? All right. How do we be in the Spirit? Here's, here's what he tells us. Ephesians 5. And do not be drunk with wine, 
in which is dissipation. But be filled with the Spirit. Verse 19. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. So, this is how you can be in the Spirit. So Paul says, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. So he's drawing a comparison. So imagine somebody who is drunk. He is in the spirit, but different kind of spirit. The person who is drunk, he is in the spirit, like that whole, that whole thing is controlling him. He doesn't know where he is going. Because he is controlled by the alcohol. So don't be drunk. But be filled with the spirit. So, a person who's drunk, who's intoxicated, he's under the influence of that alcohol. So Paul is saying, that's not the life we are living. We are to live a life under the influence of the Holy Spirit. How can you tell you're under the influence? See, a man who is drunk, from, from one distance you can tell. Why? First, he smells like it. Second, he's walking in a strange way. He's not walking straight, something. Then if he's talking, all kinds of things, it comes out of his mouth, the way he's behaving. So you can tell, hey, that man is drunk. From, from distance only, he's drunk. Similarly, when you're in the spirit, we can tell. How we can tell, he tell, gives us here. He says, verse 19, how you will be speaking. Speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. So when you're in the Spirit, this is your how you are. You're a person who is uh, uh, overflowing with praise, with psalms, hymns. So keep yourself. How do we stay in the Spirit? Like this. Just let a song keep coming out of your life. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Then, next. Giving thanks always. So it's a thankful heart. Giving thanks always for all things to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Third, verse 21. Submitting yourselves to one another. So three things he said. You see somebody from distance. They're, it's like a song is coming out of their heart. They are full of gratitude. And they are walking in humility. Submitting to one another. He didn't say only young people submit to older people. He didn't say that. All of us are submitting to. That's a sign that you are living, you are in the spirit. You are living, you're, you're walking in the spirit. When you're walking in submission, just submit to one another in the fear of God. So, this is how we can be in the spirit. This is the so somebody like this, you know, he is he is he's drunk, drunk with the Holy Spirit, he's filled with the Holy Spirit. Question, Vinay? Oh, Pastor, can someone become tired spiritually? Yes, they can become tired. Yes. And uh, what is the way out of that tiredness? Uh, Isaiah 28, 11 and 12. So when you're tired physically, you go and sleep. Spiritually, God has given us rest. Isaiah 28, 11 and 12. For with stammering lips and another tongue, he said he will speak to these people. To whom he said, this is the rest and this is the refreshing. So praying in the spirit is a rest. A spiritual rest and refreshing. Acts 3.19 Repent and be converted so that times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. How can we be refreshed? Spiritually. Uh, refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. 
So when we are spiritually tired, we have to get spiritual rest and refreshing. So we see in the Bible these things, right? Uh, you're praying in the Spirit. You're being in the presence of God. You wait on the Lord, Isaiah 40, 30, 31. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Right? So these are things God has given to us to refresh, rest and refresh us spiritually. Okay. So we'll continue this next week. We will pause here uh, at 54. We'll continue this. You can take your break now. Thank you.